Good morning. My name is Tyler Nelson. I'm from Champlain, Minnesota. And for my senior accounting capstone project, I want to find the possible correlation between student involvement and career success. So I chose this topic because I'm a former athlete myself. And while playing sports, I found that I've learned tons of valuable life skills that I hopefully will positively transfer over into my career. I also noticed that during my internship, there's a lot of um, team working environments. And so I thought to myself, well, wouldn't those who, per, who were previously involved in team working environments benefit from this? So I wanna see um, whether this, is, this holds true. So who will benefit from this research? Well, pending, pending my findings, I hope to encourage others to continually engage or join collegiate sports or college, college clubs. I also thought that employers um, may benefit from this research because they're always trying to find the right candidate to fit into their into their organization, especially if, the, if they are very involved, or if their um, company is very involved in team working environments. So my specific uh, research question is, are those who are involved in college sports or clubs more successful than those who weren't? Now there's many ways to define success. So in, in my research, I decided to break it down into quantitatively, which is income, and qualitatively, which is the um, skills that they may learn in um, sports and clubs. So existing research, now, existing research done by EY uh, for just former female college athletes found that 48% uh, of former athletes felt more engaged at work than 31% of non-athletes. 62% uh, of, of former college athletes were employed full-time versus 56% of non-athletes. And former athletes made about 7% higher income than non-athletes. Another interesting to note is that 52% of women executives played college sports. Some more existing research, a study that in, done in 1980 uh, found that athletes fell under a higher income bracket and also had higher um, average incomes as well. But however, see some key limitations to note is that the study was done over 37 years ago as this was done in 1980. And also the study did not include um, or did not survey female participants because um, at that time in 1980, Title IX was not um, in effect. Some more research um, for, for athletes is, and is that on average, former athletes scored a higher um, score on giving and taking feedback Former athletes scored higher on emotional intelligence, also known as um, EQ. Former athletes earned a higher starting incomes um, at, when they just graduated college and in year five. However, in year 10, um, these numbers seem between athletes and non-athletes very comparable. Also found that former athletes report a higher level of satisfaction in their careers. Um, but this study also noted many differences between males and females, which is something that I definitely want to focus in on for my research. There really wasn't much data um, existing out there for those who, the benefits of participating in clubs. Um, besides really these two articles and found that college students um, were found to have, those who participate in clubs were found to have higher social adaptation, adaptation skills. Um, they assessed themselves for ha having higher cooperative skills and they felt that they were more applicable to the workforce. Another study found that a few hours of uh, involvement every week um, increased their quality of job later on, and extracurricular activities were associated with increased labor, labor market benefits from those, especially from disadvantaged backgrounds. So some quick conclusions from existing research out there. Athletes make more than non-athletes. Female athletes seem to benefit the most um, from participating in college sports. Um, athletes also reporting to have higher skills and satisfaction in their careers and that those involved in sports seem to have gained valuable skills for the workplace. So my research process, I sent a survey out to thousands of CPAs through Boz's network as well as uh, shared a link to my survey on my LinkedIn account. Um, and I also analyzed, so I analyzed this data through seem to be never ending um, pivot tables on Excel. So the first thing I did, first I want to compare athletes and non-athletes and participants and non-participants of clubs. So 
To begin, I started with athletes and non-athletes in their income comparison. And that, as you can see, athletes earn less than non-athletes, which goes against my existing research. And I found that through in gender, male athletes earn less than non-athletes. However, one very key thing to note here is that female athletes um, earn more than non-athletes in both mean, mean and median. I did mean and median because there's very, um, very high income responses and that might skew the data. So I included mean and median um, to be presented. So then I did um, mean e incomes over time, and I found that athletes are making less than non-athletes across all age groups, except for the ages of 31 and 40. Um, and gender, this um, males follow the same trend as um, the aggregate, and females, um, athletes, however, experience um, in income favorability over time, especially into their later years, going into 31, 40, 41, 50, 51 and older. So then I asked uh, my survey respondents to um, uh, rate themselves on skills, so those skills being I take personal responsibility, I have uh, leadership skills, time management skills, how engaged they felt at work, stress levels, um, the ability to, their the confidence to solve difficult problems presented to them, um, how satisfied they were in their career, and um, their ability to effectively communicate with others. And so one thing I wanted to point out here before is that um, for the stress levels um, skill or numbers here is that a higher number indicates they are more stressed so for stress you want a lower um, income what you see is the athletes had a lower stress level in comparison to non-athletes and so as a whole not or athletes earn a higher or um, assess themselves as higher skills in each of the following areas except for taking personal responsibility for their work So some hierarchical positional differences between athletes and non-athletes. I found that non-athletes held higher, higher positions than athletes. And through gender, male athletes held higher positions than male non-athletes, which is, I found very interesting. And another interesting thing to know is that female athletes held lower positions than female non-athletes. Some other interesting differences between athletes and non-athletes is that athletes tend to work longer hours than non-athletes. Those who preferred, in general, who, who preferred working in teams had higher incomes. And through male and female, female athletes preferred working more in teams than non-athletes, and male athletes preferred working individually than non-athletes. And I also found that athletes were more likely to have a higher GPA than non-athletes, which is very something to consider because being an athlete, as as I know, considers four to five hours of practice each day, depending on the sport. So I found that that athletes that could balance their schoolwork, um, their practices and games, as well as have a social life, and yet they still had a higher GPA, was something that I found very interesting. So some comments included by some of the athletes. Um, one specific one. So I asked them what skills they learned. Um, while playing coll collegiate sports, and one response said the ability to lose. Um, you know, he explained that this may sound odd, but he says that many people go um, through life in college without ever competing and knowing what it's like to lose. Um, and he says that if, you know, when this happens in the workplace, many people don't know how to respond to it. Um, so I thought that was very interesting and the type of adversity that, um, that college athletes may be exposed to. Some other common themes were team, teamwork, time management, determination, and again, like, like this respondent said, how to deal with adversity. So now we move on to non-participants and participants in clubs in college clubs. And I found that club participants earn more than non not than non-participants. And again, as seen as as follows in the general, male participants earning more than non-participants, and again, female participants earning more than non-participants in both um, median incomes and average incomes as well. And then I also did the same thing as with athletes as median income over time. And I found that participants having higher incomes than non-participants, especially in their later years. As you know, club participants may have an edge uh, starting out and then non-club 
participants seem to catch up a little bit, and then they're even at 31 and 40, and then they seem to skyrocket um, in age groups 41 to 50 and 51 and older. Again, some gender differences. Males follow the same trend as, as this data presented here. However, female participants having higher income across all age groups, which is something extremely important to know. Again, as skill assessment differences between non-participants and participants, and one thing you'll notice here is that non-participants scored higher in each and every category, including career satisfaction, effectively communicate with others and the rest, than, not, than participants did. So that's something very um, interesting to note, as you, as you saw previously, that participants seem to make more income or earn higher incomes than non-participants, but in this case, on some um, qualitative assessments that non-participants scored higher in all categories than participants. So some hierarchical uh, positional differences between non-participants and participants. It, I, however, cannot draw any conclusions because non-participants um, were, were widely dispersed and especially in low accounts. So I could not draw any conclusions there. Um, but one thing um, interesting to note is that 90% of partners surveyed participating in clubs while in college. Again, other differences between non-participants and participants is that participants tended to work longer hours than non-participants. Um, those who preferred working in teams had higher incomes. Both male and female participants who preferred working in teams had higher incomes than those who preferred working individually. Male non-participants that preferred working individually had higher incomes than those who preferred working in teams. And just like the athletes, participants who were participants were more likely to have higher GPAs than non-participants. And again, this is I find kind of a little odd because you have to balance again your schoolwork, your club work, um, and also have a social life, and yet still have a high GPA, which says something about both um, those who are involved in clubs and those who are involved in collegiate sports. So comments included by two participants, the biggest skills that they learned, one participant or one survey, one respondent said that it better prepared them for the working world than um, their classes ever did. Um, some common themes, communication, leadership, and time management. So some conclusions from my survey is that athletes um, had lower income than non-athletes. Athletes scored higher on, on self-assessment skills and as well as career satisfaction. Uh, club participants had higher incomes than non-participants. However, non-participants assess themselves as higher skills or on self-assessment skills and satisfaction. So to answer my question, are, are those who were involved in college sports or clubs more successful than those who were not? Well, it really depends on how you look at it. If you look at it like quantitatively or at their income, Athletes are less successful if you're looking at my survey results. If you're looking at existing research, they are more successful. Um, and for club participants, they are more successful if you're, again, looking at their income. However, on the reverse, if you look at their skills and more of the qualitative um, factors, I, both my research and existing research have found that athletes are more successful um, in, in the skills and the participants are less successful according to my survey results. So it really depends on how you personally define success. So some limitations to, to my research is that there's very limited um, responses. Again, I only had 100, 107 responses and most likely they were all from Minnesota. Um, had many high incomes, which is again why I use um, the median for many of my results. Um, and survey respondents may overstate their skills. So one person, a respondent may assess themselves as having very strong leadership skills when in fact they are very poor leaders. So if I had more time and um, someone wants to pick up my, my research project right now and continue on with it, they definitely want to have more response, find more true conclusions to um, the data, Look into more different industries. Again, many of my respondents come from an accounting or corporate background. So maybe going into um, you know, the healthcare, for example, is a possibility. Um, specify the club participation area. Many responses with few or limited participation in the respective clubs. So that could be just showing up to a meeting for one hour, um, one hour a week. Does that really count as participating in a club? 
Thank you for listening to my research presentation. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you learned a little bit about more about the differences between athletes and non-athletes and participants and club non-club participants. Thank you.